Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the builder pattern. It is one of the more widely used construction patterns, same as the factory pattern. It is quite popular. Uh, sometimes it is used incorrectly and uh, I'm gonna try to show you an example of how it's uh, used incorrectly sometimes and how you can shift it towards being used, being, uh, used in its uh, more intended way. So just a quick statement on what the builder pattern is. So we take the construction process of an item and we separate it from its representation. Okay, so if you just imagine some data, we want to put it in a square hole or a circle hole or a rectangular or diamond hole or a triangle hole, right? We take that same data and we just put it into different different holes, right? If you've imagined that, yeah, you're good, right? Some people, they are not very good with the imagination. So let's have a real world example. Uh, what I have here are a bunch of builders. All these builders, they implement the I key value collection builder. So hopefully from the name of the interface, you get an idea that we have a key, a value, and that's generally what objects are. So if you think about a class where we have a bunch of primitive types, it's just a key and a value behind that key, right? Same kind of thing, although you can put complex objects in there, but never mind, right? In our example, we have an interface and we're just saying, we're just gonna keep adding uh, key values to here. And at the, end of the, at the end of the process, we wanna end up with some kind of representation of what we've been building. So as I said, we have a construction process and then many different representations. Here we have a construction process and it should be apparent what I'm building. Uh, a lot of car make right color red and then the year that it's been made in is 1990 well that's not a very good year 1980 there we go so uh what i want to do is i want to get this data i want to post it to my api and at the moment i do my model binding from the query to a object or whatever to whatever object my programming language on the back end understands right so what i do is i have my builder I pass it into the construction process, which accepts the interface, okay? So it only accepts the interface. You will notice that at the end, we build the builder, but the build method isn't contained on the IKEY value collection builder. Uh, you will understand this at the end, but in short, the thing that we build doesn't have to inherit from, the, from one common thing. So there is no need to actually finish the building during the construction process. We build it outside, right? So you think about like how we basically dip the builder in into this construction process and by the end, we're gonna have our thing in different representations, right? So in our case, we have the query format, question mark for the first parameter, right? So we got, so I keep track of the query length and then I have the key equals and the escape data string value because it's going into the URI. So if I would, go ahead and uh, do something like, I don't know, let's uh, say world, run it. You can see it puts uh, whatever separation characters there, right? So super simple. Now let's say we now want to send it as part of the form. We're still building the same data, although now it's in a different format, okay? Here we have the form body. So if we put it in the form body of the HTTP request, good, we're still representing the same object. It's still a red LADA 1980. If you don't know what a LADA is, go Google it. What are you doing it? Then for some bizarre, bizarre reason, we have decided we're gonna put it in HTTP headers. Google's doing it, everybody's doing it. Why are we not doing it, right? We've been reading, reading some shady forms. So there is another representation of HTT in HTTP headers. Please do not do this. And coming back, to the point where you don't need, these have all been str strings. So the query builder, the form builder, and the HTTP header builder, all of them return strings. So it's like a common data type between all of them. Uh, the, last one, the last one, the dictionary builder, again, we build the same object, although it is a dictionary now. So the construction process shouldn't be tied to the return type that you're going to build in the end, okay? It is literally that abstraction, right? So this is how you separate the construction process from the representation of what you're building. 
Hopefully uh, that makes sense. Let's go over how a builder might be used in the wild by some developers, me in the past included. So, read about the builder pattern. Take a look at the examples online. And this is what you came up with. One day you were like, oh, I have a common object in my code. I'm going to use a builder, right? So you have the car, the make, color, manufacturer date, and then you make the car builder, right? Which once you create the car builder, you get a new car. You can set the make and set the color. You can set the manufacturer date. And at the end, you build the car. If you use the builder pattern like this, I want you to work for my company. I can kill you myself. Yeah, don't do this, please. So anyway, uh, how can we improve this? So we are clearly doing something wrong here because look at all this. This is like an explosion of uh, these uh, proxy methods which are already doing this thing here, right? Uh, don't do builders for the sake of just slapping on this extra layer and thinking you're separating something. This is not easier than doing new car and setting these properties like so right uh let's go over a couple of things how we can make this better right we're gonna copy the query here and uh, we're gonna first understand that we want a reusable construction process what are we building in our case it's a uh, red ladder 198 right so public void we're not like our construction process doesn't actually return whatever is being built right it just knows how to slap things together so let's say build red ladder 1980 just like that now we need to put our car builder in there for now what we're going to do is we're just going to supply our builder we will then move all of these methods in there for the builder and now we're really building a red ladder of 1980 there is still not enough abstraction here so the whole point of design patterns is that we want to make our code reusable uh, we can't if we ever come up with a second builder so if we want to represent our red ladder in some kind of other funky way we cannot just go ahead and uh, supply a different builder so at the moment the way we call this function is build a red ladder and we'll just uh, Let's say remove about yay much, grab our builder, stick it in here. We cannot just create a new builder, so new builder, new, some kind of new builder, right? And uh, start passing this new builder, the type that doesn't exist, because it's not this specific type. So what you do is you go ahead and put it behind an interface, okay? Let's just go ahead and say... Put an eye on the, on the start here and make sure we inherit from this. I'm gonna grab these methods here. You do not have to make it return the same type. These can be void. Usually you do put them on new lines anyway. Why not just call them? Uh, you, you know, this one is a preference. Let's go, I, I will however, it'll just slap them on there because why not, I like it. All right, there we go. Now your interface will have to return the uh, the iCar Builder as well. And everything's a little bit better in the world once we take this iCar Builder interface. And instead of the specific car builder, we actually accept an interface. And now any other class that implements the same interface, which is going to take our red ladder, and instead of representing it in this car class, we may put it into an HTTP request, right? So this is the builder wrong. Actually close that one. Yeah, if we might put it in the query builder or we will combine it. So instead of just the form or just the query, we may want to put it into an HTTP request overall. So some of it will go in the form, some of it will go in the query and some of it will go in the headers. Each individual method now can decide, okay? Just because we've now created a process where it's easy to substitute it, this makes this class a lot more bearable, even though it is just a collection of proxy functions. All right, so we've got a builder. We pass it to the build method. At the end, we grab the builder, we build, and let's uh, just uh, dump the object out. Uh, obviously missing some semicolons. 
and there is the car. So our red ladder represented in a C-sharp object. What are some of the other things that you can do to this to improve it? Don't just have a proxy methods, right? Don't just set the make, don't just set the color. If you can, if you have a dependency injection available to you, do use constructor, maybe inject a database, do some validation. Do you support this color? Do you support this make? Is the correct thing being inputted? You can stick validation in your build as well. And for example, if you're doing, if you're working with dates, don't accept a string. This may not be the best thing to do. Do something along the lines of a date time because the string can accept anything. When you say date time, you're gonna, you're gonna narrow it. And then you already know that you're gonna be supplying a date time. And by the end of it, you can even parse it as well, right? Or sorry, not parse it, format it the way that you want to. So be a little bit more smarter of what your parameters are, what your actual methods are doing, right? So instead of a string where we could, I don't know, maybe if uh, you have fat fingers like me, we'll sometimes type something like this, but now this will force you to do something along the lines of time, TC now, or an actual concrete date. This will be the end of this and hopefully you understand the builder pattern a little bit clearer. Oh, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store. So if you do want to support me, don't just donate buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.